What's the cheapest GPU you can buy? After taking a look at some free graphics in the form of Intel's iGPU, let's find out what the cheapest dedicated one is for our friends without integrated graphics. Going on eBay and sorting price low to high will spit out some pretty garbage GPUs. Half of them are straight up ancient and others are just terrible. For example, we don't want to deal with the pain of AMD's Terascale drivers which are just too much of a headache, so we'll avoid AMD's low-end something thousand series GPUs. We then find old Nvidia GPUs like Quadros and Teslas that probably don't have modern driver support. But then we came across these, AMD's R5-240s, ripped out of Dell OEM machines. They're built on the relatively modern GCN architecture and they're still supported with new drivers. These are also conveniently available in single slot, half height, or full height variants, so here's ours. We paid $13 for ours since we wanted the full height bracket. If half height is fine for you, you can just unscrew the bracket and you can save $2 or 15%. It has 384 stream processors on the GCN 1.0 architecture and it has 1GB of GDDR3 VRAM. So you can't really expect it to be particularly fast. It has two display outputs, inconveniently, they're only DVI and DisplayPort, and not HDMI. No external PCIe power is required as the GPU uses at max 50 watts. Now we here at Beast PC are pretty familiar with low-end GPUs like that GT710 or UHD630 we take a look at, so we'll have plenty to compare to. And of course, we had to overclock. We eased it up to 990MHz on the core and 1090MHz on the memory. Not a huge overclock, but that's what happens when the core VRM looks to be a single phase. Starting with GTA 5 at 720p low, this thing put a smooth average of 41 frames per second. At stock settings, the FPS was just slightly lower by 7% at 38fps. Both are slightly stronger than the old GT710 we took a look at, which gave 38 FPS after an overclock. We then turned the memory overclock to 1050MHz and ran CSGO. At 1080p low, it did 53 FPS average, a small improvement from the stock result of 48, again slightly stronger than the GT710. In GTA 4, an older and less optimized game at 720p low, the card again gave slightly above 30 FPS at 37. Fortnite ran well enough as well. At the 720p low settings, it managed 42 FPS average, perfectly enough for a fun, non-competitive match. And finally, we tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and with low expectations at 800 by 600 with the lowest settings, it ran at 22 FPS average without crashing which although it isn't really playable, it's still quite respectable. If these results don't seem particularly impressive, that's because they're not. Intel's hated UHD 630 graphics trounce this in basically a worst case scenario for that graphics card. This card was overclocked and did 53 FPS average in CSGO. The Intel iGPU did 58 at stock settings with slow 2666 MHz RAM outdoing the card even when it had its best chance. But this is, after all, a $13 GPU. It's designed for people who don't have the integrated graphics and need a display out, for office or server use for example. It's cheap, reliable, and convenient, and it does a good job for its intended purpose. Also, this thing won't steal system RAM to use as VRAM, which is a plus for certain people. And at $13, as long as the drivers work, playing games is really just a bonus. So if you want something to display an image, consider this card. It's very good. It can even play some games. That's all for this video. If you liked the video, please leave a like and please consider subscribing. See you next time.